You've got a sick patient, pneumonia, older patient, perhaps immunosuppressed, immunocompromised at the very least because of surgery or whatever. Um, what, do you know, what do you start before you get the cultures back? So in our hospital, yeah. if, you're, if you're septic, right? So if you are, you know, that's our kind of criteria, right? If you're on pressors, you have an elevated lactate, we're gonna call you septic so that we know getting it wrong is increasing your risk of death substantially. For pneumonia, playing the odds based on our antibiogram, our best combination is piperacillin-tazobactam, amikacin, vancomycin. That is that's our it. best. That's our best start. Do I feel comfortable doing that routinely? Absolutely not. Especially with the emerging literature that piptaz plus vanco equals acute kidney injury in a way that we thought never would exist, and it's a classic case of medical hubris. Well, how could these two drugs that we use like water uh, be harmful? Well, they are because drugs do a lot of things together that we never conceive of. But <clears throat> playing the odds and knowing that hopefully two of those drugs will be off within 48 hours, if not all three, and they'll be on something else. That's what we start with based on what we know about the current level of data for drugs, including even the new drugs in terms of pneumonia, pneumonia, actual pneumonia treated patients in phase three clinical trials, what we know about the cost of these agents and what I know about the susceptibilities. So you're trying to cover what? The waterfront, what's on that waterfront? I mean, it's Pseudomonas, it's, it's Proteus, it's Enterobacteraceae, and it's MRSA. Now, MRSA rates in my ICU, and I think in most ICUs in the US, are not as good as they are in the United Kingdom, which is de minimis, but our MRSA rates are going down, for, especially among pneumonia patients in this country, which is why the gram-negative problem's going up. Right? Some of our prevention strategies, like the chlorhexidine, work better on gram-positives than gram-negatives, and so as we squeeze one end of the balloon, the other side is called counterpulsing. Well, just to great. kind of reiterate things that have already been discussed is that that's going to be specific to a given institution of what that cocktail ends up looking like. And I will, again, emphasize the need to take patient-specific factors into that. So you know what that. he does. I know he does. What do you do? No, but what I was going to say <laughs> is I know he takes into account patient-specific factors, but I bet you not every, not every physician at your institution that practices in the ICU does that. They go to the cocktail, particularly overnight from that standpoint. The patient might have a history of an ESBL that requires a different empiric okay. therapy. What we do is it's very similar. It's vancefepime and tobramycin, and that's taking into account both our the organisms that we have in our unit, um, the vanc piptazo thing that's already been discussed, um, and then, yeah, just the ability to give the best likelihood of coverage. Well, I think another factor that you have to, I mean, if you have some clue as to what is the source of the, infect, the infection, you should definitely take it into account. And so I'd say if we think someone has zero sepsis, um, we would not use a third generation cephalosporin, we would use a carbapenem because our ESBL um, rate is very, very high. But for pneumonia, uh, we are more interested in covering the more resistant pseudomonases. And we use, um, like uh, in Jason's hospital, vancomycin and cefepime. But again, you have to tailor that to the patient. But again, this is all institution specific. You've got to know your institutional antibiogram, right? No, I think that's absolutely correct. I, and each institution is different. And sometimes within an institution, I mean, you can have areas that are different. Our BMT ICU is very different than some of the other ICUs in terms of the pathogens that they see. But, you know, it's never that simple. And that's the problem. And that's why I echo Yoav's comments about rapid diagnostics. I mean, if we have a septic patient, sure, you want to take into account where you think the source of the infection is, but sometimes you just don't know. Many times you don't know because they may have infiltrates, they may have some white cells or a folian. You know, could it be lung? Could it be urinary tract? And we know, for example, that, you know, if we err on one side, I mean, <laughs> if I pick an aminoglycoside, and we'll throw that out for a minute, if I go carbapenem, piptazo, cefepime, I'm going to run about a 20% chance of not covering the gram negative with any of those in our unit. Now, you're right, if I knew it was urinary tract and I went with a carbapenem, I'd be more likely to cover the ESBL. If I really knew it was gonna be pseudomonas in the lung and I went pseudocephapine, for example, I'd do a little better, but there's still a 15% likelihood I'm not gonna cover the bug with a single agent, and that's where we throw in the aminoglycoside. And unfortunately, you know, with the aminoglycoside, particularly in someone who's in septic shock, yeah, we're looking at one or two doses, sometimes more, and there is a little penalty to be paid for that from the standpoint of the nephrotoxicity. You know, what, what is the morbidity of, of renal failure in this setting? It's high, isn't it? I mean, if you start off with a creatinine of 0.9 and you add, you add an aminoglycoside in the setting of sepsis, how often do you see creatinines of two, three, four? A lot. Right, but again, it's, it's always not, hard to right. tease out cause and effect because right. sure. these patients are under-resuscitated uh, and there are whole hosts of issues that may be interacting with it. And the nephrotoxin that is the biggest abused thing in my hospital is the CAT scanner, right? Because in addition to getting a broad-spectrum antibiotic cocktail at night, what happened because they actually 
had a hypoxemic event is someone sent them to the CAT scanner. With and, contrast. With, of course, it's just, you know, because, you know, and, and the pickup rate for PEs in this country on CAT scans is 3%, which tells you we're over-testing the vast majority of people and exposing them only to harm for the sake of us to sleep better, which is okay. abs absurd. So the point is it's not, you know, there are lots of nephrotoxins floating around in the ICU and you have to manage all of them, not just the antimicrobials.